what's up guys i have no idea why i'm signing myself up for this but i went out to all of my social media platforms and said hey i'm gonna film a q and a q and a this could be a great start this is a new different style for me i don't just open myself up uh, typically for questions i don't have a host on my show so this is gonna get weird i picked 15 because there was a lot of them uh, i tried to knock out all the repeats and all of you crazy people that ask me weird shit uh not gonna tell you what like my set favorite sexual position is you guys are fucking out of your minds all right let's get into it number one this was a big one what would you tell your younger self at your age by the way how old are you i'm 32 uh what would i tell myself at a younger age invest more time in you not so much time in other people especially romantic relationships i think it's important at a young age, life is trying to pull you in so many different directions, what your parents think, what your family image is, girlfriends, friends, sports coaches, dreams that you have, all these different things try to pull you in every which way. Um, I think it's important to try to really figure out who you are. I think it's important, and I'm probably kind of you know, getting too stretched out. This is more than one piece of advice, but don't be afraid to ask questions. That's a big one too. I remember when I was young, I was so afraid to look stupid. Like, oh my gosh, look, he doesn't know. What? He doesn't know? Guess what? I'm 32 and I still don't know most things. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Uh, that's, that's probably the biggest ones I could give you. What is your biggest weakness? I'm an overthinker. I'm a catastrophizer. So like one, I'll overthink every situation as it is. And then when I do that, I tend to think, well, the worst case scenario here is probably going to happen because it always happens to me. And I've been re working really hard over the last few years to change that because I'm definitely not like a victim mindset person. I'm not someone like, oh, well, you know, it's always me because it's just me. And if it, it always happens to me, it's not really that. It's just I have observed my life a lot and been like, yeah, life has been tough. But I think my biggest strength is also that I always try to see the hope in the future, even if it doesn't seemingly make sense to. I think I'm a pretty, you know, we all get knocked down in life, but I think I'm pretty quick, you know, in hindsight to kind of get back up on the horse and keep on going. So there you go. Number three, the best advice I've ever been given. The best advice I've ever been given is probably just to be still when things are um, going chaotic or things are going poorly or, you know, whatever. I just wrote this thing out on Facebook the other day and, I, you know, it was late at night. I had just gotten off work and I was kind of doing a mind dump of like the last seven months and one thing that my dad always used to tell me was like, when you're emotional, when you feel like you want to do all these things, you probably need to do nothing. Because when you do things out of emotion or whatever, that's typically you get yourself in a lot of trouble. And he was just he wasn't giving me advice. He was giving me an observation about my life. Well, my grandpa, his his whole thing was boy, be still, just be still. You're always trying to do something. You're always trying to move around. You're always trying to that was when I was a kid and I was always playing and stuff. He's like, boy, just be still, just sit still. And the most consistent lesson I think that I've been trying to, the universe has tried to feed me is can be still. Um, I'm going to find this. Um, so I'll just read it to you. The past seven months have been the absolute hardest of my life. There's no denying that. I saw dreams come to reality only to watch them fade back to black. I watched my, my mother leave this world. And I, as a simple human man, have been struggling immensely. The only words I can give you in hindsight, if something ignites your soul, chase it. If something hurts your soul, leave it. If your soul is too tired to know the difference, just listen. The answer will come with silence and no immediate action needed. And then a little snippet at the bottom. Immediate action in the times of trials usually lead to our most regretted mistakes. The world will shake you and beat you to your core. There's no doubting that. You have to decide if you'll be broken forever or just for a time. So that was kind of a mixture of like the first couple questions of like, what's what advice would I give myself and what is the best advice I could I have ever been given? 
And I, I really think that that was kind of a molding of those. So there you go. That's there's that answer. How many fights have you had? So <laughs> inside of an octagon, I've only had one. I was uh, an amateur fighter for a short amount of time, and I took one fight and just realized that while I love training, while I love martial arts, while I love um, all that, I do not enjoy that feeling of having an impending date come up where someone's going to try to kick the shit out of me, right? Or me try to hurt them. I, that's just not who I am as a person. Uh, I, I don't like hurting other people. And I don't, I don't like that. Remember when you're going through a fight camp or something like you have to remember of when you were a kid in school and you were going to have to fight, you knew at 320. So you were sitting there all day long going, God damn it. Like I got to go fight after school or same feeling. If you never gotten fights in school, if you knew that you had fucked up that day and you got in trouble and mom was going to tell your dad, you're just waiting on dad to get home or you knew she was going to call him. And when you saw him that weekend, like you knew your ass was grass, that impending feeling of like, fuck, man, that's just not something I want to walk around with for months at a time while I prepare for a fight. And the focus you have to have of I'm the best, no one can beat me to stay in that mindset for so long is just I don't think it's very healthy. Plus, it's a tough sport. A lot of people don't make the kind of money it takes to withstand a lifestyle. And for me, it's not worth getting punched in my face. Just being honest. Uh, how many fights did I have in school, though? I think like two. I didn't fight that much as a kid. I fought more in hockey, honestly. Or like on the streets with my buddies. Like not fighting, but like you get into it. Shut up. Fuck you, brother. And you kind of get into it. We always did that. Plus, I wrestled my whole life. So I always had an outlet for aggression, you know. And maybe it was because I wrestled and stuff. Nobody ever really tried to fight me. Not that I remember. I had one kid and I fought him twice. Beat him both times. So favorite book. I think my currently the creative, I think it's called the creative act by Rick Rubin or the creative way by Rick Rubin. I think that is currently my favorite book. I'll stick with that favorite movie right now. Ooh, the new roadhouse with Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal is really good. Me and my daughter have been crushing just, just watching venom with Tom Hardy, like crazy lately. It's a good one. I always used to answer that the movie Rudy was my favorite. It's still one of my favorites, but I don't think I'll, I'd still claim that Rudy is my absolute favorite. Favorite movie of all time across the board, I think, is Big Daddy. I think that's my. I think that's a safe answer. Favorite TV show? Not a hard one here. Big Bang Theory. I love Big Bang Theory. How do you? Na oh, how do you? <laughs> How do you handle negative comments? That's a tough one because, you know, we're human. Obviously, my Joe Rogan answer for you would be don't read the comments and or fuck them and don't worry about it. If you put something out there, you're expecting feedback, right? So is all feedback going to be good? No. Here's the hard thing about social media. Your social media career, if you have one, will go through phases, right? So at first, no one's going to watch. No one's going to care. So no one's going to be saying anything. And that hurts a lot because you're putting yourself out there to nothing. Then there will be this new stage that comes in where like your friends and family will watch. And that's usually positive comments. And then they talk shit in the background. Once you get past that phase, if it takes off past there, then you'll get like a small little audience outside of your friends and family that'll start watching but they're usually pretty supportive because you usually like clicked in their niche or, you know, you found them. So it's this small little group that's supportive. The next stage is where you have problems. You have a now an actual audience that's bigger than just your friends and family and a small out support staff. Now you have the general audience is starting to get involved. And of course, it starts to come in. This guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Look at his ears. Pull your hat down. Your tattoos look stupid. Why are you crying on camera? Do you know that you're a fucking asshole? Like all these things that will just come at you just because someone found you that day. That's hard in the beginning. Um, because I think, especially if you're being raw and you're being authentic, they are actually criticizing you and they are hating on you and they are shitting on you, right? So uh, that's tough. I remember 
early in my you know youtube especially career sitting in my room in the morning and just being like motherfucker son of a bitch you don't even know me and like that's how i would start my mornings is responding to these crazy comments and then i was getting all these anxiety attacks and like i was just all up in my head all the time about who am i why 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 don't people like me and it was like people don't not like you you're reading youtube comments so then I just kind of realized like that is always going to be there. If you engage in this, then that's always going to be there. You're not going to get away from it. There's nothing you can do to make it stop outside of like block insane things, you know, insane accounts that just keep trolling. You can always block it. But you have to just understand that when you get online, you're opening yourself up to that. And, you know, the time that you invest in it is just not worth it. Uh, How did I become famous? I'm not famous. I promise you I am anything but famous. I'm assuming that one came from TikTok because that's where I have most of my followers. I I got most of, so again, my career has gone through a few stages. When I got out of the military, I was like the veteran gun guy. I, it was all guns and military and shooting guns and stuff like that. I just stopped connecting with that culture and what it was portraying to people and stuff like that. And I started getting really into like uh, bodybuilding and just taking care of myself. And then I got very tired of just lifting weights all the time. I started fighting. And then after I started fighting, I kind of took a break for a while and just focused on being like a podcaster and an entertainer and kind of gave my body a break. And then I started rock climbing and hiking. And then I moved back home. And now I've been really doing a mixture of just this is Cam's channel. This is who I am as a uh, thing. And you know, some people have followed me through all those a lot of people jumped off the bandwagon with the veteran stuff. A lot of people jumped off the bandwagon when I stopped taking my shirt off. A lot of people jumped off the bandwagon when I stopped fighting. And um, you know, rock climbing is kind of a very niche thing. So I didn't gain a huge audience there. And my podcast has always just been the people that genuinely want to see what I'm up to. Uh, I don't think people go to my podcast for like, like I'm Joe Rogan, like I'm not filling up their morning, they're not waiting on my posts to show up. So these are just people that genuinely care about me and want to see what's actually going to come of this thing. So to answer your question, I'm not famous. I just got uh, any sort of following that I have just because I have been consistent at this as consistent as possible for like five to seven years. Do men's feelings really matter? That's a complicated one. Because yes, of course they do. Um, I've learned over the last year that yes, your feelings do matter. Should they be expressed to everyone? No. Should you always express every feeling you have? No. And is there a difference between complaining and expressing your feelings? Yes. The best advice I can give you is as a man, have a group of guys that you can talk to, that you can put your gripes out there to, um, don't don't do it to your lady. And you know, obviously don't let your kids see you griping about money or stresses and stuff like that. You you have to you have to compartmentalize yourself. Right? You do have to have people in outlets to express yourself authentically. I do feel like your life partner should be someone that if you're really struggling with something, something you should be able to go to them with any thing at any time. I'm saying day to day life stresses, you shouldn't put that on your woman. Just my opinion. So yes, your feelings do absolutely matter. Uh, Just find the proper outlets would be my best advice I could give to you. Did you see the Trump rally? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. He got grazed in the ear. That was pretty intense. Secret Service, uh, you know, is being criticized right now. Trump's only thing was get me my shoes and he wanted to stand up and yes, I saw that. I did. What is your opinion on the sketch stuff? Okay. If you guys don't know who sketch is, sketch is the guy, uh, this streamer Tuesdays, Tuesdays. Yes, brother. What's up, brother? That's him. Uh, he got outed this last week. Apparently before he was famous, he had an only fans where he would do some homoerotic stuff to what extent i don't know i don't care 
I never really cared about Sketch anyway. He was force fed onto my timeline like he was your guys's. I saw the what's up, brother? Good, to, hey, brother. I saw all that shit. Uh, it, it was fine. Whatever. I even watched a couple of his golf videos. He's fine. Whether he's gay or not, what the hell does that got to do with me? And honestly, I thought it was cool to just see all the like normal bros, like all the like Saturdays are for the boys, fucking do barstool dudes, like the guys that watch these live streaming things. I've seen nothing but positivity going, hey, we don't care. And again, as a straight dude who has had plenty of gay friends in my life, like you don't care about your gay guy friend's sexual orientation because you're not trying to fuck him. So like you don't care. And like if they're just cool, normal people, which again, sketch is like a whole character that he's created now. But I'm assuming with the way people are rallying around him, he's a cool, normal guy that has had life experiences that some of us can understand and some of us can't. But at the same way, you look at him and you go, okay, like, would I do that? No. But like, would I want my bedroom activities with a woman even? Even if I chose to post them on a social media app, which I would not, but say even if I did years later, would I want that popping back up? No, I wouldn't want that. So like, I could understand his shame. I could understand that his uh, demographic is mainly guys, young guys. And I understand that, you know, social media is not nice. So I, I get it. But he seems like he's back streaming again. Uh, again, two days after that happened, the Trump incident happened. So I think that's going to kind of overlap that in the grand scheme of things. Uh, who am I attracted to? Well, there's nobody in this room. <laughs> um, uh, women. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't really have a type. I'm sure that's a very douchebag thing to say. I don't really have a type. Um, I've dated blondes. I've been with brunettes. I've been with redheads. I've been with... Uh, I'll, let me just talk about what preference. I like a mom bod. I like a, I like a normal looking gal. The eyes are always what catch me. Uh, most of the gr women I've ever been with... They wear these big framed glasses that really accent the eyes. It gets me every time. Uh, just for the fellas, the eyes are where they hide the crazy. So if you look at them and they're just, you can't, something like Medusa where you just can't look away and you're distracted by all this, just all this going on. Run, run like hell. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I don't have a type. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm 32. So I could not imagine being with someone who was younger than like 27. That seems crazy to me. Like, what the fuck would we talk about? And I obviously would not date someone older than like 40 something. I don't know. I don't, I honestly don't know. Uh, I, I, I love women. I, I really do have a fondness for them. I think that they're the greatest things on the planet when they're being nice. <laughs> so that's, that's, I guess that's the only thing I can give you. What is my biggest fear? Snakes. Snakes. Uh, unless this is like a Coach Carter moment where they're like, God damn it, can we, you know, stop talking about stuff? Like, and then he goes, my greatest fear is that we're not that we're inadequate or whatever. No, my greatest fear is snakes. I don't fuck with snakes at all. I'll pass out and throw up at the side of one. Don't like them. Uh, what's for dinner tonight? Uh, I honestly don't know. Uh, I'm hanging out with my daughter. I'm going to make us something or probably just run through a drive through We've been big on Chick-fil-A here recently. I've fallen in love with their grilled chicken wraps. Get that creamy salsa on there with a little eight-count nugget. You eat the nugget on the way home. Then you got the wrap for dinner. A little Arnold Palmer. A little Arnie Palmy. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, the last question we had, and I'm hesitant to share this one, but she's gone now, so I, I feel like it's okay. What's the most embarrassing text message I've ever sent? Um, if you're an adult and you've ever been speaking to a romantic partner, and you're trying to let them know what may occur later on that evening, sometimes text exchanges can get a little hot. They can get a little hot. And you can say things that are quite graphic. You would not want those things, as Sketch is now finding out. You would not want your sexual things posted, or found out, or read by other people. God forbid, if you accidentally sent one of those text messages to your mother because the names in the phone were similar. 
Yeah, guys, don't put your romantic partners under cute names. Like mamas or something like that. Because mamas is a lot like mom. Yeah. It's hard to back your way out of that one. Luckily, my mom's a gangster. She was. So she was like, hey, that obviously wasn't meant for fucking me, right? Hey, man, be more careful. And that's kind of where that one was left. And we never spoke about that again. So that is probably easily the, uh, the most embarrassing text message I've ever sent. That I remember. Remember, your boy has done a few intoxicants in my life, so I'm sure there's been more that I don't remember. Guys, if you enjoyed this Q&A, let me know, and we'll do more. It's going to be a bitch to edit this because my camera was just acting all kinds of a fool. I love you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video.